Hello YouTube, I'm your Huckleberry, and this is the Spyderco Shaman. And I have of course already, I already have a review which I will link to below in the uh, about section there. Uh, of the Shaman, uh, it is the it was the M4 Blade HQ exclusive version with the Jade G10 scales. I have since traded that one. And, uh, but I love the, the, the Shaman design so much that I went ahead and picked up one, uh, you know, of the regular production runs in the S30V. And since they're essentially the same knife, this knife doesn't really warrant its own review uh, because the ergos, the fit and finish and everything's the same, except for, you know, it's got S30V and black G10 instead of M4 and JG10. Uh, the one thing that I will point out about this one, you know, this one does have a stone wash finish as opposed to the satin finish on the M4 version. And I think because of that, the inside of the spidey hole here is a little more rounded, a little smoother than on the M4 version. The M4 version was a little bit sharper, not sharp to where it bothered me or anything, uh, but I just kind of noticed it when I got this version, that the inside of the spidey hole there is a little bit smoother, better rounded. So that's really the only difference that I've seen between the two. But, and so instead for this video of, of doing a, a full-on review, what I'm going to do is, is do a little disassembly, clean it up, get it back together, just so you can kind of see that uh, if you want. Uh, you will notice that this is not the stock clip. This has the uh, MXG gear uh, deep carry clip, which I like a lot. I like this better than the original clip. This actually came with the knife, uh, the gentleman that I traded for this knife uh, for. Uh, P. Watkins on uh, Blade Forms. He's lent in uh, a few knives for me to review. Uh, my friend over there on Blade Forms, I traded with him to get this knife. And this clip, uh, he had this clip put on and he just sent it along with it. And I'm glad he did. This is the first uh, MXG clip that I've had and I really like it. Uh, I think it's good. You know, it, it's designed to go on, I think a PM2 is what it's listed at, but it'll go on, you know, any kind of Spyderco that has this kind of uh, clip there that uses a clip with this this kind of drill out. So I, I like it a lot. I think it uh, adds to the knife. I think it makes it probably better for EDC than the stock clip on it. And again, you can go watch the review of the other um, Shaman that, that I did that had the stock clip on it and you can see the difference there. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this apart, clean it up, uh, because while the action on it is pretty good, it's pretty smooth, I think it could be better. So that's what I plan on doing there is cleaning it up, putting a little KPL on there, and seeing if we can't get that pivot just a touch smoother. So here we go. And uh, these are T8 screws. Let me get this out of here. One thing I love about the Shaman design is that it's just simple and straightforward and it works. Something doesn't have to be complex in order for it to be, you know, beautiful and 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 work very well. And, you know, I, my favorite knife of all time, as you know, I've said several times and I have a review on it as well, is this large Sabenza 21. Uh, mine comes with the Tanto blade, but that, I mean, my love goes for any of the blade shapes that that uh, Chris Reeve Knives offers uh, because they're just beautifully, beautifully simple and elegant and they just work. And uh, another good idea when you're taking apart anything, whether it's a knife or a firearm or whatever else it may be that has, you know, screws and whatnot that you take apart is to get a mat. My mat here, let me move it across here, has these ribbed uh, raised edges so that when a screw falls out, it's not going to roll off the mat into the edge of the table and into oblivion. <laughs> it's going to stay, you know, right, right here in my little work uh, station here. And I know the pivot for this guy is a T10, T10 Torx, which is again, this kind of lends to the, the overall uh, robustness of it is that you got T8s and a T10, whereas a lot of knights use T6 and then a T8 for the pivot. So this kind of steps it up a bit in the sizes which just kind of lends to the robustness of it. That's, I love the Shaman because, you know, again, like I said, the simplicity of it as we go here and get it apart. But I also love it because it feels like a 
tank, you know, it feels robust and kind of tank-like without being, you know, too bulky or hefty or unwieldy. It, it's, it's, still, it's thinner than, and I said this in the original review, it's thinner than what I imagined it would be when I first got it. Uh, the, the handle, I gotta be careful, that was dumb. Don't touch the blade there, Huck. Uh, <laughs> don't be stupid. Um, I nearly cut myself. But anyway, it feels like a tank without being overly hefty. You know, when I, when I think of tank knives, I think of ZT, of course, and I think of Hinderer. This is a Hinderer uh, three and a half inch XM18 non-flipper. I love the non-flippers in the pre-Gen 6. Pre-Gen 6 flippers are great. I love non-flippers in pre-Gen 6. I just picked this one up too. I'll probably, I've already done a hinderer. I, done a, I did a, a Gen 6 hinderer, but I might go ahead and do this one too uh, because it's a earlier generation and it's a non-flipper. So it's something a little bit different. I'll probably go ahead and do a review of that too. But, you know, this is definitely heftier than the Shaman. And yet I have the same amount of confidence in the Shaman as I do this when it comes to hard use. And I'm someone who's not going to use my knives just super, super hard. I work at a flooring store and so I do need it to cut vinyl. I do need it to cut, I'm using uh, alcohol here. To, I'm gonna use alcohol on a rag to clean it up. So I do have to cut vinyl and I do have to cut carpet, you know, carpet samples, things like that, which, you know, I wouldn't consider hard use, but you know, I, probably medium use. I'm doing a little bit more than just opening packages and things of that nature. So it's a step up from light use, I would say, medium use, but I don't think I would go into just calling it hard use where I'm out there batoning with, of course, if you're batoning, you should use a fixed blade. Don't baton with a folder. I don't care what the advertising for the folder is. Don't baton with it. Use a fixed blade for batoning. And, and outdoors in general, um, a fixed blade is going to serve you better than a folder. But anyway, all right, let's get these. Let's see if we can get these washers off of here. Maybe we can. Maybe we can't. Wow. That's in there, guys. That's in there. This one, of course, I can get off because it's not around the pivot. But this one, I'm having a little bit of trouble with. I need, what do I need? I need a piece of paper or something, some kind of card to, oh, there goes my camera. <laughs> there goes my camera, because I'm reaching through there. Okay, let's get this reset. See, I don't really edit my videos, so everything that you see is live and is happening. Hey, look at my cards. You probably think it's stupid to get cards for a YouTube uh, channel. And you may be right, <laughs> but I have them, you know, just in case. They're cheap enough that it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to ruin this one trying to, wow, that is just, I'm going to need something stiffer than that because that is not coming off. All right, let me look around the table here. I got all kinds of junk on my table here. Let me see, maybe I can use tip of the engine here, the best tech engine, to pry that up a little bit and get that off. I'm trying to get in that little hole there and just, there we go. Oh my Lord, I'm going to break the tip of the engine. It is just, it is stuck on there, guys. I have not seen that before. Hold on, I'm going to take this off camera because I got to make sure I don't uh, mess up the washer here. You know what? All right, it wins. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it there because if it is that, I don't know why it's that stuck on there, but if it's that stuck on there, I don't want to take a chance on uh, screwing the washer up and you know pinching it or something like that. So I'm just gonna leave it as is and I'll just you know KPL around it there. All right, so let's get the alcohol and let's clean off this washer as best we can. And just clean this off on the inside here. See, there's like a little bit of gunk. Is that gunk or rust? I think that's just gunk. Should just be gunk. I mean, this is an, basically a new knife. I know that uh, Mr. Watkins, Professor Watkins, 
uh, just got this knife. Carried it for a little bit. He just wanted to try one out. You know how we do. Sometimes you just get something with no real intention of keeping it. You just want to trade it on to the next guy. And so, let me see. Let me get a little more alcohol on here. Let me do that. Rub on it. Some more. Clean it up real good. Alcohol is a good cleaning agent because it dries quickly. It's not going to leave any kind of residue or anything like that. And it'll get most things off. I guess that's just some patina <laughs> is what we'll call that. A little bit of patina right there on the inside. I would imagine that came for the factory because I know that uh, Watkins didn't have this apart. He never took it. He didn't have it long enough to really take it apart. Like I said, he just wanted to try it. So anyway, yeah, looks like it's just got some, some stain in there. I don't think that's rust. I don't think that's rust. But anyway, so that's not gonna come off. That's just the way that is. All right, let's clean off the detent ball here. Kind of get the inside of this scale. Something, uh, another thing I love about the, the Shaman is look at the milling. I mean, that's some extensive uh, internal milling, which really keeps, I mean, while not a light knife, think about if those were full steel liners, this would be a chunk. And so I, I love that they, you know, milled out all that inside there and saved some serious weight there. Let's go ahead and clean off this washer. Just rub it down a little bit. There we go. I mean, it's not very dirty. It's factory fresh, not very dirty. This is a USA, this is one of Spyderco's USA knives, USA made knives. Uh, things that come from the USA tend to be less dirty than ones that come from China, in my experience, uh, especially cheaper ones. Cheaper ones are usually, usually on cheaper ones, I'll crack them open pretty early on just because I know that when they're coming from China and it's a, say, a, a, you know, a $75 or less knife coming from China, that there, there's a good chance that it's going to be dirty inside of there. So I, I'd usually crack those open pretty early and clean them up and get them, uh, lubed up and everything. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I've got some EDCI here. This is a corrosion inhibitor. Now this is really what you need to use on the M4 version, because uh, M4 is not stainless, and so it will corrode on you. And so, you know, just spraying some of this on there, you know, everyday corrosion inhibitor. Uh, just spraying some of this on there, you know, from time to time, once a month, something like that, maybe a little bit more often and uh, rubbing it in and then spray on, like it says right here, spray on, rub in, wipe off. Just doing that will help uh, protect that blade. This is S30V, so it is stainless. But, you know, even with mm, stainless steel, <laughs> sometimes you can get some of that. So it's not a bad idea to just, uh, you know, go ahead if you have it, if you want to. Going on ahead, if I don't start touching the edge of that knife, I tell you what, I'm gonna cut myself. Uh, going on ahead and spraying it down a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything, that's for sure. So there we go. And then I'm just going to rub it in. That's probably a lot more than what you need, guys. That's a lot more than what you need. You probably just need about two spritzes, and I just did about five. And then I'm going to flip it and do the same thing to the other side. Oh. Look at that. Oof. Okay, there we go. That was much better. Rub it in, and then I just let it sit for, you know, just a few seconds. Let me go ahead and get the spine. Get that all done. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit on this backspacer here because it has already got, um, well, do I wanna do that because of the holes there. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything if it gets down into those holes or, you know, behind the the holes here on the G10. It's not going to hurt anything, but okay, let's do this. Let's cover that up and spray just a couple of spritzes there. Right, and I do want to go ahead and do that just 
I'll just go ahead and kind of rub all the way up with what little bit I got on there. It doesn't need much for the inside. I live in an environment, I live in Texas, uh, uh, West Texas, so we have dry heat. Uh, not, not a ton of humidity, so I don't have to worry too much about corrosion anyway. And plus this is all, like I said, this is all stainless. So it doesn't matter too much. You know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on this scale as well. Boop, 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 boop that up. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit on there too. Just kind of one spray across there and rub it in. It's not gonna hurt anything. So there we go. And now let's go back to the blade. I've got it all rubbed in and then let's just wipe off any excess. That's what you're supposed to do. Let me go ahead and change my rags here. I got my bright orange rag. You know I love orange. You guys, you've seen my PM2 and you just saw my, <laughs> my hinderer. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of orange. I like orange, it stands out, it's bright. It's something a little bit different. I like it, I like it especially on knives. I don't know why, I just do. But I like orange in general. I have orange shirts and shoes and everything like that, so anyway. All right, so that's all nice and protected now. Let's go ahead and rub it off on the scales here. So you can actually go ahead and pop that out if you wanted to, but I don't care to, to be honest. All right, rub it all off here. And we should be good and protected. All right, and with most stainless steels, you probably don't need to do that. If you have something like D2, which D2 is as stainless as you can get without actually being stainless, uh, but if you have like M4, 3V, uh, in, just anything that's not stainless, uh, this EDCI is a good choice to um, just go ahead and spray on there and it'll help protect. Speaking of M4, look at that, Super Freak. Benchmade Super Freak that I got that will be featured on the channel before long. So there's that, that's an M4, but that's coated. So you don't really need to use the the EDCI, EDCI or any kind of corrosion inhibitor when it's coated like that. Maybe just on the edge there, but you know, not super necessary. All right, so let's get this out of the way now. I've got it all, all uh, <laughs> protected and whatnot. And let's get our KPL. Knife Pivot Lube, which is uh, a really nice lubricant for your knives. It's my uh, lube of choice. <laughs> and so, and then on the blade here, so what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna put a little in there. That's for the detent ball. So we put a little in there, rub it around, just kind of go on the detent ball path here and get all that nice and lubed. Go ahead, put a little more in the detent ball there. This is probably way too much lube. Trust me, I know. I over, I'm, I over lubricate my knives a lot. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I just like it. Let's go ahead. And we're gonna put some lube on there. Uh, KPL is actually scented. I can't really smell it. I mean, a little bit. It's got a little scent to it. And so, you know, that's nice. Just a nice little feature there. All right. And let's go ahead and lube up this right here. The inside where it's gonna go on the pivot. Get a good amount on there. Maybe make it a little bit smoother. All right, and let's get to Reassembling, shall we? Here we go. So that's gonna go there. There we go. This is gonna go here. There we go. Let's go ahead. Oh, let's go ahead. I forgot to uh, put a little KPL on there. Let's go ahead and put a little KPL on there. Well, if I can get it back off. Ah, oh, dang it. Dang it. There we go. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's get that off. Put that on there. And then, yeah, we'll just put a little lube 
all around here. There we go, which makes that nice. Nice and smooth. Put the washer back on. We'll even put a little bit on top. I know, I know, I know I'm over lubricating. I know, trust me. You don't have to tell me, I can read your comments already. That is way too much lube. I know, trust me. I just like it, okay? Sue me. I like the lube. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Uh, let's make sure that this, yeah, that's good there. Stop pin is in place. But this is just so easy to, to disassemble and reassemble. It's just so straightforward, so simple. It's beautiful, beautiful in that way. All right, here we go. Screwing it back in. There we go. Nice tight. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead. I got some Loctite here. Let's go ahead and use a little blue Loctite for these screws. Here we go, Loctite. Just a, a nice light thread locker. Uh, nothing, nothing too heavy at all. You definitely don't want red. Red is permanent. Do not use red. Use blue, just get a little bit on there. And then as you screw that in, it'll kind of spread across all the threads there and lock into place a little bit better. It's not that hard to break if you need to, but it's gonna, it's gonna for the most part, it's gonna keep your screws in place. Now, I've never had a, anything back out on me without it, but you know, it's just a added, added layer of protection. So here we go. All right, getting that back in. Oh, fantastic. It's all in. Now we got the pivot. It's the oh, I need to switch to the T10. T8's not gonna work for that. So here we go, T10. We're gonna put it on the pivot. Just a bit, there we go. Don't need too much. And let's put that in. All right, don't wanna lock it down too much. Let's see how the action is in the centering. So centering is definitely favorite clip side. Action, oh, that's hard to do under the camera. But let's tighten it just a touch. And centering, still favoring clip side. Let's tighten it a touch more. There we go, there we go. That's better. Got a little blue Loctite on there, see? But anyway. Oh, action good. Yes, smooth, centering, good. All right, I think that's, I think that'll, yeah. That's definitely, that KPL's working in. Yes. That's definitely better than when I first got it from the, it was essentially from the factory, like I said. Uh, P. Watkins had it uh, first, but he just, you know, he got it just to check it out. Carried it, you know, a couple weeks and then decided that he was going to move it and I wanted it. So we worked out a trade. And so it was basically, you know, from the factory, he didn't crack it open or anything. All he did was add that wonderful clip there. I like that clip. If you want to, if your spider code does not come with a deep carry clip and you want one, look at MXG gear. That's a good clip. Titanium. It's titanium. So it's nice. All right, guys. I think that's gonna do it. Here's just a little preview of what's to come. Let's just get a couple more on there. Uh, the Benchmade Super Freak, to me, is a similar vein to the Shaman there. It's, I think it's kind of their bigger, tankier knife that's not you know, so much a tank. Um, so, anyway, there's that. And why not? Let's throw the hinderer on there too. And you can kind of get this shot going out. All right, guys. That's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything else, let me know down below. Like if you liked it. 
thumbs down if you hated it. Hit the subscribe and notification bell, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.